Hello, in this video, I'll talk through the first couple of questions should be pretty quick strikes. So for the first problem, we have a to the second power raised to the fifth power. So if we look to our list, I, I have it here just for reference, but on the exam, you won't have it. So make sure you know these properties just absolutely cold. We are raising a power to another power which is exactly what the power property says. When raising a power to another power, we multiply the exponents. And that's exactly what's happening here. 2 times 5 is 10. So this is indeed the power property. Next here, we notice that we have a squared, b to the third, c to the negative fifth, raised to the fifth. And on the right-hand side, we have a to the tenth, b to the fifteenth, c to the negative fifteen. So if you look at these powers and we look at the 5, what could have happened in order to go from 2 and a 5 to a 10? Well, we multiplied 2 and 5, which is exactly what we did here. But here we just had one term inside the parentheses. Here we have one variable, two variables, three variables that are all being multiplied together. So this is actually product to a power property, not just the power property. Power property is when you just have a single term product to a power property has is used when you have multiple variables. So example of that is right here when you have two variables, this is a product being raised to a power. So we use x to the fifth, y to the fifth. In this particular case, if you already have a power here, you just multiply the two of them together. So this would be product to a power. Next one, we have two terms that are being multiplied with the same base. So immediately we should be thinking uh, or saying product property. When multiplying terms with the same bases, what do we do? Well, we add the exponents. So two plus five is seven. So this indeed is an example of the product property. Uh, this one you gotta be very, very careful and nuanced about. So if we notice a to the fifth is in the numerator and it ends up in the denominator and b to the 6 is in the denominator, and it ends up in the numerator. And what happens to the sign of this power? It changes from negative to a positive 4. So this is actually an example of the negative power property, which says when moving a term from the numerator to the denominator, or from the denominator to the numerator, we change the sign of the power. So as we flip this fraction, the sign of this power changes. So this is the negative power property. Here we have a product inside parentheses being raised to a power. So it smells like product to a power, but let's see if it's done correctly. So two times three is six, that's fine. Five times three is 15, that's okay. So this is actually product to a power property. Here we notice that we have A's on top and bottom and we have B's on top and bottom. And on the right hand side, we just have a single A and a single B, which means this got simplified somehow turn into this. So if we notice and we look a little more carefully, we have a to the second power over a to the sixth power. So when bases are same and we're dividing, we subtract the powers top minus the bottom. So two minus six is negative four and lo and behold, that's exactly what we have here. Similarly, b to the fifth divided by b to the ninth, when bases are same and we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. 5 minus 9 gives us negative 4. So this is the quotient property. Here we have a quotient, which is a fancy way for saying a fraction, being raised to a power. So it smells like the quotient to a power property. Let's see if that actually works. 5 times 2 is a to the 10th. That's what we have. 3 times 2 is 6. So that gives us b to the 6. That is indeed what we have. So this is the quotient to a power property. Now here, we're not multiplying or dividing anything. We're adding or subtracting. So none of these properties can even be the answer. The answer is either combining like terms or none of the above. Because you'll notice here, none of these properties have anything to do with addition or subtraction. So when we have addition or subtraction of algebraic terms like these, we can combine like terms if we have any like terms. And as a review, we have like terms when the bases are the same or the variables are the same and the powers are the same. So both have to be the same. They cannot be, you know, 
um, a squared b cannot be like with a b squared. They both have an a and a b, but the power of a here is 2. The power of a here is just 1. So these two terms are not like terms. We cannot combine them. Now when we do combine like terms, we add or subtract the coefficients. We don't touch the powers at all. So is there another a squared b in the problem right here? So we could add 3 and 4, which gives us 7 a squared b. Do we have that here? Uh, we don't even have an a squared b. So some insanity must have happened here. Immediately I know it's none of the above. There's no way to go from here to here if we don't have a 7a squared b in the answer. So this would be none of the above. Moving on. Here we again have sums and differences, so we can try to combine like terms. We have a t squared y cubed. Here the t is being cubed and the y is being squared. So these look similar, but they're not like terms. The bases are the same, but the powers are not. But here we have a t squared and a y cubed. So this term could be combined with this term. So th 4 minus the 3 would give us just 1. So we would have 1 t squared y cubed, which is exactly what we have on the right-hand side. Now we turn our attention to the t cubed y squared. There's another t cubed y squared here. So we have 7 of those, and if we add 4 more, 7 plus 4 would give us 11. So that is indeed the case here. So this is just an example of combining like terms. Nothing else is happening here. Here, uh, we're back to properties because there's no pluses and minuses, so it cannot be combining like terms. So here we notice that the a to the third was in the numerator, and on the right-hand side, it's in the denominator. So the term moved from the numerator to the denominator, and here b to the seventh is in the denominator, and it moves to the numerator. So anytime terms move from top to bottom or bottom to top, the sign on the power has to change. So 3 changes to a negative 3. The 7 changes to a negative 7. This is an example of the negative power property. Here, we notice that a to the 5th becomes a to the negative 5th, but nothing moves. The a was on top, and a is still on top. The b to the 6th becomes b to the negative 6th, but it's still on the bottom. There's no property that allows us to do this. If we change the sign on the power, if we change it from 5 to negative 5, it has to move from top to bottom or, top or bottom to top. It cannot stay in the same location. So this is actually none of the properties. This is nonsense, so it should be none of the above. This is a classification question. Um, this one I think I'll do on the iPad because I got to write a couple of things down. So, all right, see you in the next video.